three iconic dishes from Peru at the table. The one I wanted to do, I googled, buy guinea pig UK. It turns out they're all still breathing. Boys, welcome to my big Peruvian night in. I know I get a lot of stick for traveling the world and being inspired by food and trying to bring it back to the studio. Oh, 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 However, oh, 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 yeah. I know I get a lot of stick for, you know, all the hundreds of millions of pounds I raised for charity and, you know, uh, I'm just a really nice guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the point of this week was to give you a flavor because looking at photos isn't going to do it justice. We're going to taste three dishes that you're going to absolutely love. So what's the main drink in Peru then? We always like to pair a drink with the food for Big Night In. Now, we could go beer, they do great beer in Peru, quinoa beer, corn beer, but I've gone for a short drink, the Pisco Sour. And this all depends, in terms of impressing them, on that very first sip. So Pisco originates from the town of Pisco, in the valley of Pisco, okay. next to the river Pisco. So where did they get the name from? I had no idea, but it is <laughs> delicious. And one of the classic drinks is Pisco Sours. There's loads of versions. I'm gonna do the classic one, and it needs a bit of a DIY, okay? you'll need to help out. Basically, about a lime to a lime and a half each. A whole bunch of ice. It's one for you. <laughs> and we want a lot of Pisco. A lot of lime juice, so half as much sugar syrup. And ironically, although it's half the amount of sugar syrup, it's also two to one sugar. And lastly, egg. That was a lot of lime. You've done a great job, thank you. It's a lime field back there. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard of these. And now the egg part of the sour, which gives you the froth. However, uh, what are you doing? if you're doing it by hand... What are you doing? What do you mean? What are you doing? With the knife. The egg. I only want the egg white, so you can just... You know there's easier ways to do this. Is this a Peruvian technique? Mm, I saw it in a Peruvian bar. He did it a lot more stylishly. <laughs> So now for the egg white part of the Pisco Sour. If you're making this and shaking it by hand, you want pretty much an egg white per cocktail. But because it's in a blender and it does a lot of hard work, two is plenty. Because it's gonna get the air into it, whisk it up. It? Okay. They all get garnished with a little bit of bitters. Lovely. This is the Inca flag. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And therefore the flag of Pisco. Let's see what you think. Oh, I really like that. That drink is phenomenal. And I am going to award you one brownie point if the rest is as good as that. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's the first part, a classic national drink. Mm. The second part, it's our causa. The causa tastes delicious, looks brilliant. It's all about the history and the story of where it's come from. And if there is one complaint at the table about it looking like a 1970s dinner party, I'm out. I mean, it looks like it tastes weird. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It's like a potato California roll. C-A-U-S-A -A literally means the cause, and it was back when they were having war with Chile, and basically hard times, rations, all they had was the cheap ingredients, and they thought, how do we make cheap ingredients look impressive, build up morale, and therefore, this, some Peruvians claim, was what got them through the war, was the, the pride of having much better food, despite the fact it was still stuff very easy available to them. Literally, the potato part is yellow potatoes boiled up in their skins once they're cooked to let them cool down and take the skins off. Push it through a ricer because they're quite waxy. I think if you mashed it, it'd be very gloopy. And it's seasoned with salt, lime juice, more lime, and the Peruvian chili, aji amarillo. Oh, mate, I had some of that when we made the steak stir fry. It's quality, you'll love that. It's not too hot. Oh. You can have a good, a good dip, it's fine. Yeah, it's predominantly chili. It's boiled up to get rid of a lot of the heat, but you've got all the flavor. And then it's got onion and garlic and other spices and some vinegar in there as well. So the eggs are literally just boiled, but boiled to the point where they're still nice and yellow and they haven't got that grey ring. The potatoes, once you've seasoned it with the lime, the chilli and the salt, mix it up, job done. The crab mayonnaise, tinned crab, mayonnaise, tomato, chilli. Like, couldn't be easier. So this dish centres around potato. Potato is iconic in Peru. In fact, I even went uh, up high and when we got there, there was a whole community of people who were there to protect the potatoes. They just... Guardians of the potatoes. And they keep three different banks of seeds. One they sent to Norway. So should the world collapse, basically this family have protected potatoes for our future. And while I was up there, while they're busy working the fields with potatoes, their wives are taking alpaca wool, dyeing it, natural colours, weaving it, and turning it into 
presents and I brought you some presents back. Oh, that's really oh. kind, I think. They're reversible. If you don't want the uh, alpaca on the front, you can have the llama on the back, I think. Surely Ben looks more like Mr. Garrison. <laughs> <laughs> so this is cured fish and there are lots of trains of thought on it. The fishermen off the coast of Lima will tell you, just salt and lime with the fish, job done. Then over time it starts to build and lots of other flavours come in and now different ceviches, different places have their own style and this was the one that I was taught in Lima at a cookery school and therefore is the one I'm going to recreate for you. I say me, Baz is going to do most work. First up, sea bass. Traditionally, it just needs curing with lime juice but before you do that, a generous pinch of salt. What that does is the salt opens up the pores of the fish and allows more of the flavour and the lime juice and stuff to go in. So, a couple of things. Generous handful of sliced onion. This is just peeled and sliced as fine as possible. And then you want the chilli. Now, again, this would traditionally be the same chilli as before, but I can't get it, so we're using a chilli more available to us. Quite spicy, do you want one of it? A teaspoon. Next up, garlic. So this is just minced garlic, minced up on a board with the back of a knife, a little oh, pinch of sea salt, raw. raw garlic. A tablespoon or two of celery puree. And it's celery with a little bit of fresh ginger in it. Again, you can splash it or you can measure it, about two tablespoons. So more of our chilli paste. We've got our diced chilli, but also our chilli paste. A little bit of coriander. Perfect. So to cure it, lime juice. The juice of multiple limes, if you want. I've already juiced some in the kitchen. Uh, ah, Why couldn't you put that in the sour? Because you were doing such a great job. Unlike a lot of ceviches, which you might do for a long period of time or overnight, in Peru, they literally say you don't want to cure in lime juice for much more than about 30 to 60 seconds. Oh, you better hurry up then. At which point, you dilute it with fish stock. Because what you want is a slightly cured outside, but you still want... Raw in the middle. Not the raw, yeah, well it is raw, but yeah. the, the texture difference. Ceviche was always served everywhere I had it with sweet potato that had been cooked in orange. And, as we've known previously in other videos we've done in previous years, all this juice is the tiger milk and it is absolutely delicious. This up, 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 up. is corn. Oh, you get those corn. Mm. So it's like roasted corn. And this is Inca corn, and for that reason it's so much bigger. Oh, yes. So there's a lot more going on than a very, very simple salt and lime cured fish. Let's see what you think. Ooh. It's so clean. I really like that. I do really like that. So why cure? rather than cook. I think it's just so simple and it's a very hot country. So one thing this recipe has done for me when you succeeded, it's made me want to go to Peru because I need to experience that in Peru to experience the whole thing. I think this is my forte. This is my thing and I know you guys... No, we say tongue there, in cheek, right? mate. You know what we do. The question to you guys is where next? Yeah. Where is the next big foodie adventure? Benjamin Everill, I would like to say personally that I think you've done a wonderful job. Not just here, but across the whole week. Yep. For that, I'm going to give you a brownie point because, I mean, God knows whether it tastes like anything in Peru, but <laughs> I'm taking your word for it. And it was delicious. I think after a few more. So have a brownie good. point from me and have a, have a round of applause from, Thank you. from everyone. Thank you. Good job, mate. I noticed, I noticed Barry's staying very quiet, but I would also like to award you a brownie point. Thank you very much. Have you got a question? We Finish have. It. What is the greatest prank you've ever played on someone? Me and my mate Phil had another mate called Rob, right, who was at six, in sixth form at the time, and he became a vegetarian because he basically fancied this girl who was also a vegetarian. And we were like, shut up, mate. You're only turning vegetarian because you're in love with her. And he's like, no, I'm not. No, I'm doing it for ethical reasons, which I completely support if you're going down that route, but Rob was not. So in order to prove that he was a vegetarian for the right reasons, we bought him two chickens for his birthday and a, and a proper coop, and we just put him in his back garden. His mum went mental. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you at this point? Uh, about 23. Moral of the story is, <laughs> girls. <laughs> Well, that brings Peru Week to a close. If you've missed any of the videos, the link is in the downstairs box below downstairs. Well, I think Ben has done a good job in convincing us that Peru is not only a beautiful country, but also home to some of the best food in the world. And hopefully, we don't have to see any more of his holiday no, photos. No, I've got don't. another album. Don't care. OK, if you like this video, make sure you like it. If you haven't subscribed already, then make sure you subscribe. And ring that bell. You can ring the bell. Sorry. I've got lots of jungle photos you can see.
click on the left if you missed our last video or click on the right video for one of our favorites.